Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, question 9, 2014, um, another trick question. So, at an activity centre, a zip line, BD, runs between two vertical poles, AB and CD, on level ground as shown. The point E is on the ground directly below the zip line. AE is 12, BE is 14, CD is 1.95, EC is 10. I love when they have a diagram drawn for us. Okay, find the distance ED correct to one decimal point. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight that long line for a minute. Okay, so you've two options for that line. Okay, actually, let me highlight it. Okay, so I could take that triangle using that line, or of course, I could take that triangle. OK, both of them contain the line ED, which is what I'm asked for. So in theory, I could use either one of them to find that line ED. OK, both are in theory correct. It will come down to which one do you have enough information to use? So I'm looking at the pink one first up here. OK, and I see all I have, I have none of the angles. All I have is a length of 14 and one piece of information on its own is never enough to solve a triangle. You need a minimum of two. OK, so let's come down to the triangle in green. I have two pieces of information and yes, I can find the third from that. OK, so in conclusion, I'm going to use the small triangle. So just as you've seen me doing in other questions, I am going to draw that triangle out so that I don't get put off by the big diagram. I am literally just looking at the piece of, it, of information that's relevant to um, that triangle. OK, it is a right angle triangle. So I'm in the log tables again, page 16, like we always are for trig down the bottom half of the, the page because that's right angled triangles. And I see the two that I have is sine, cos, tan or Pythagoras' theorem. That is all. OK, so so they should be able to solve any questions you have on right angle triangles. Pythagoras' theorem is all about sides. See, they're all small letters. A, B, C are small. Sine, cos and tan have an angle in them. So to use them, I need to have an angle. OK, this is all about the sides. So it lends itself to Pythagoras' theorem. So C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. OK. Um, C squared, if I come back here, is the hypotenuse, okay? So it's always the hypotenuse, which is X squared, is equal to the other two sides squared. Okay, Sorry, I don't know how to put a degree there, squared. Okay, so it doesn't matter which side you need to find, you need to put the hypotenuse over here, okay? And it doesn't matter which one here is A and B. OK, so therefore, I'm going to just put that into the calculator, what's on the left. So 10s are on the right, 10 squared plus 1.95 squared. And I'm getting 103.8025. I'm not interested in X, X squared. I want X. So it's the square root of answer. And you can use that answer button on your calculator if you want. 10.188. So X is equal to correct to one decimal place. So I look at the second one, 10.2 centimeters. Sorry, 10.2 meters. Okay, so that is X, the length of ED. So Pythagoras' theorem. The next question says, find the angle AEB correct to the nearest degree. Okay, so. I'm just going to rob the diagram so we don't have to keep flicking back and forth. OK, and we know he's 1.95. No, no, what did we find him to be? 10.2. OK, so the question says, find the angle A, E, B. 
OK, so it's always the letter in the middle when you're looking for the angle. So now you can see I'm in a different triangle again. So just like I always do, I'm going to draw out that triangle so that I don't get distracted by the diagram. OK, fill in the dimensions. I have a 14, I have a 12 and I need this angle here. OK, um, it is again right angled trig. OK, um, how do I know that? Because it didn't really say and it doesn't have these symbols here that I would expect for a right angle triangle. Well, it tells you that the poles are vertical and it tells you it's on level ground. OK, so you can always assume buildings or poles or whatever are on level ground and therefore form right angles. OK, so that's how I know it's right angled trig. Back to my log tables. I now need an angle. So can't use Pythagoras theorem because it just has sides in it. So it's a sine, a cos or a tan. OK, and we I've used a couple of different rhymes when we're doing it. Silly, old Harry, caught a herring trawling off America. Or we've also used, oh hell, another hour of algebra. Doesn't matter what one you use, as long as you remember these, okay? They're the trig functions that links sides together. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is label the sides of my triangle. The side opposite the right angle is always your hypotenuse. Okay, the side opposite the angle in the question is opposite. So there's OPP and of course the last one left or you can see it adjacent means beside. It's beside the angle in the question. Okay, so when I look at that, Again, sine cos tan gives you the same answer, okay? It, it's not that one of them is, is, I suppose, essentially the correct one. It's whichever one can you use. Which one have you enough information for? So you look in the question, you have information about adjacent, you have information about hypotenuse, okay? So which one of these three trig ratios links together adjacent and hypotenuse, okay? So there's my A for adjacent, there's my A for h for hypotenuse so it's a cause function that links them together i know nothing about the opposite so therefore i can't really use sine and i can't really use tan because i don't know anything about it it's the angle i i need to find so i, I kind of need to know the opposite if i'm going to find the angle you can never only find one unknown at a time so you always say cause of the angle and it doesn't matter what you what letter you use for angle i'm um, I'm going to cos x equals um, adjacent over hypotenuse, OK? So in this one, cos x is equal to my adjacent is 12, my hypotenuse is 14, OK? Now, I want x the angle. I don't particularly want cos x. So what cancels cos? It's the opposite of it, and it sits behind it on the calculator. It's cos inverse, OK? So I get the cos inverse of both sides because what I do to one side, I do to the other. And you can see cos and cos inverse end up cancelling each other out, OK? So that's how you're left with just x, the angle, but you have to get the cos inverse of the other side, OK? So pick up your calculator again, make sure you're in degree mode, hit shift and cos, and that's how you get the cos inverse. You'll see the minus 1 on the top, and then 12 over 14, OK? So then I get x being equal to 31 degrees. OK, so I hope that makes sense. You'll always end up using the inverse function if it's an angle that you're finding. OK, um, always it'll be the inverse function. OK, then the next question says find the angle DEB. OK, let me colour him in. Let's change colour. Let's go to a bit of green. DEB, DEB. OK, so it wants me to find this angle up here. Given that CED, so CED is 11 degrees. Okay, so why did it give me the 11 degrees? Okay, well, it gave you that because now you have a protractor. Do you see that around those three angles? Sorry, it's a little bit big. Let me change that a little bit. 
So you can see your right, your protractor angle coming in there or what's called a straight angle. OK, so a straight angle. is 180 degrees, okay? And I, I call it a protractor because that's what's on a protractor, okay? And you can kind of see it there and it helps you remember that they add up to 180 degrees. We've just found out that the one in orange is 31. They've told us this one is 11, okay? So I'm gonna add them two together. And I get 31, 41, 42 degrees. And of course, I'm gonna subtract that off 180 degrees minus that 42 degrees and I get what is that 138 degrees let me just check that on the calculator so I'm not making a silly mistake so therefore the angle DEB is 138 degrees okay so a bit easier than it appeared and then it says hence or otherwise find the distance DB Give your answer correct to one decimal place. OK. Again, let's rob our diagram. OK, so we have it in front of us. Might as well make the digital technology work for us when we can. So I need to find the distance uh, BD. OK, well, that's easy enough. That's just one triangle in this case. OK, which is this one here. So now that's not a right angle triangle and it's not right angle because we worked out that angle at the bottom to be 138 degrees. OK, um, do we know anything else? Yeah, we worked out uh, DE, didn't we, at the start or ED? That was 10.2 out here. The length of this side. OK, so if I draw that triangle then, as best I can, excuse the drawing. Okay, so there's my B, there's my D, there's my E, and just fill in what I want. There's my 138 degrees, there's my 14, there's my 10.2, okay? And I need to find my X up there, okay? So not a right angle triangle, and you know that from the 138 degrees, um, in a right angled triangle, 90 degrees is the biggest angle. So if it's anything greater than 90 at all, you know that there's no way it can be a right angle triangle. So not down this half the, the log tables anymore because they only apply to right angle triangles. So I'm either the sine rule or the cosine rule. Okay, so I have two sides and I need a third side and I have one angle. If we look at the cosine rule, it's got mainly sides in it. I know that from the small letters and just one angle. If I look at the sine rule, it's an even split between sides and angles. OK, so if I need to find a side, I need to have two angles. Or if I need to have, find an angle, I need to have two sides. That's how the sine rule works. OK, so I need to find a side in this one. So if I was to use the sine rule, Remember, we always match the sides with the angles across from it. I would need another pair. So I'd need to know the angle across from 14. I'd need to know this angle here if I was to use the sine rule or indeed this one up here. I have neither of them, so I do not have enough information to use the sine rule. So therefore, I am forced to use the cosine rule. Both of them would give you the same answer, but I do not have enough information to use the cosine rule. Okay, so the only thing you have to be careful in the cosine rule is that the side that you put over here on its own has got to be the side opposite the angle A. Okay, so this is the only angle I have in my question. So it's going to be quite easily going to be a cos 138 degrees. Okay, so therefore little side A has to go across from it. Okay, and it happens to be the side I want. So it happens to be x squared. So x squared is equal to, after that, it doesn't matter which is b and c. I'm going to go 14 squared plus 10.2 squared minus 2 times 14 times 10.2 times cos 138. OK, and when what you need is on the left, the right ends up being just numbers. So I can uh, put everything into the calculator all in one go.
So 14 squared plus 10.2 squared minus 2 times bracket 14 times 10.2 times cos of 138 degrees. And I am getting 512.282 for that. OK, I want X to side, not X squared. Anyway, that 512 is a million miles away from 10 and 14. So it should be a flag to you to know you're not quite finished yet. And you're not because you need to find the square root of it to get X. Because square root is the opposite of squared. So hit square root. You can hit the answer button if you want. Your calculator always remembers the last answer. So 22.63365 is what I have. And it says one decimal place. So one decimal place means I look at the second place. So X is equal to 22.6 meters. OK, so the cosine rule. So a lot of right angle trig in that. And then at the end, a little bit of non right angle trig. If you are interested in technology or engineering, but are not doing higher level maths, why not consider our Level 7 in Electronic and Computer Engineering? This is a three-year programme that looks at the design and development of embedded electronic systems. These are the medical devices that keeps us healthy, the consumer devices that keeps us entertained, or the controlled systems that keeps us safe on the road. You can then progress on to the Level 8 in Electronics and Self-Driving Technologies and from there to the Masters. Check out the link below for more information.